I can't. I, I came back to it. Just notes on the second presidential debate. Romney and Obama squared off in front of undecided voters at Hofstra University. First note: undecided voters have a disproportionately high number of mustaches, as you can see here and here, which kind of makes sense. It's not quite a beard. It's not quite shaven. The mustache is the undecided facial hair. Second note: as the candidates hit the stage, I'm sure you noticed they were wearing exactly the same outfit. Which must have been pretty embarrassing, and both of them seemed a little pissy for the rest of the night. In the course of the night, Romney certainly made it clear that he knows what it takes. I know what it takes. I know how to make that happen. I know what it takes to balance budgets. I know what it takes. I know what it takes to get this to happen. I know how to make that happen. And I know what it takes. And the audience had plenty of surprises. Nina Gonzalez, for example, looked like a Midwestern German woman. I want to introduce you to Nina Gonzalez. President Obama. And then Carrie Lotka turned out to be a man, which totally threw Obama. I want you to talk to Carrie Lotka. Okay. I care. Good evening, Mr. President. I'm sorry, what's your name? It's Kerry, Kerry Latka. I think Kerry just moved seats and called himself Barry. He got to ask two questions. I want to introduce you to Barry. Hi, Barry. Hi, Governor. I think this is a tough question. And then a kid named Jeremy. 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 Jeremy got to ask a question, but note, either he's got crazy shoulder pads or he's huge. And I think he's huge. He's totally a superhero in disguise, because if you look a couple seats down, there's a girl superhero who didn't even bother putting on a disguise. The Avengers are undecided. Anyways, Jeremy asked them to play Finger Finger What's My Number. Obama got the number one right. Number one. But then with two, he still showed one. Number two. And then with three, he showed two. Number three. Not how you play Finger Finger What's My Number. Anyways, Romney nailed it. In four years, and one thing, $2,000. The top five, four years. Then there was a little bit of an argument about the number of points in Romney's plan. That's why I put out a five-point plan. Governor Romney doesn't have a five-point plan, he has a one-point plan. And that's pretty much of a diss, because a one-point plan is technically just a sentence. Then they started arguing over what nicknames they were going to get. This has not been Mr. Oil, or Mr. Gas, or Mr. Coal. And nobody wants to be Mr. Gas. Gas isn't just appearing magically, we're encouraging it. He's encouraging gas, and then Romney started waving it. Job is encouraging Mr. Gas. And then for a little musical break, Obama led the Stuffy Men's Humming Choir. <laughs> Then there were a few things that I have to say seriously concern me as a voter. In the middle of the next decade, any car you buy, you're going to end up going twice as far on a gallon of gas. I don't like this car. If you have a car that goes twice as far as it normally would, when you go on a trip, you'll end up just as far away from the place that you wanted to go as when you started. Next. This pipeline that Governor Romney keeps on talking about, we've create we've built enough pipeline to wrap around the entire earth once. That's a very impressive sized pipe, but I don't think you understand how pipes work. The oil that you send through it is going to come right back to us. And then... This puts us on a road to Greece. We have a road to Greece? No wonder we have a deficit. I appreciate wind jobs in Iowa. I'm not sure what a wind job is, but it sounds kind of nice. Then there was the talking charades portion, which Romney kind of nailed. Grow and down. You're going to see rising by holding down the value to push on this issue across the board. And then some lady challenged them to a tongue twister competition, which again, Romney nailed. Illegal, legally, illegally, 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 illegally. Then Romney kept on saying this. Piece of legislation. At first I was like, legislation, what's that? And then I realized I think it's a diss on Mrs. Obama's organic garden. And he kept on saying it. Why, when you said you'd file legislation, you would file legislation? He even used it when they talked about guns. In, in my state, the pro-gun folks and the anti-gun folks came together and put together a piece of legislation. That sounds like a fun party. As long as I can still have the right to take my rifle to the supermarket and shoot packaged meat. Then the superhero lady asked a question about women, and Romney tackled the national epidemic of women who seemed to be hiding. I had the, the chance to pull together a cabinet. All the applicants seemed to be men. Seemed to be men, just wanted to point that out. You can never know. And I, and I went to my staff and I said, how come all the people for these jobs are, are all men? They said, well, these are the people that have the qualifications. And I said, well, gosh, can't we, can't we find some, some women that are also qualified? And they were like, I don't know, I think they're hiding. I went to a number of women's groups and said, can you help us find folks? And they brought us whole binders full of, uh, of women. I knew it, they're hiding in women's groups. And they have binders of women, binders of them. And he was excited to find those binders and leaf through them and look at them, which isn't creepy. Sure, it might be creepy if he tore the pages out and hung them on the wall of some renovated basement room, but he didn't. They're in binders. The first bill I signed was something called the Lily Ledbetter Bill. And this is named after, let me guess, Lily Ledbetter. And those are the notes on the second presidential campaign. Mustache.